Hey everyone, today's quick video is on Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. I'm using version 3.5 of it. Um, I want to talk about how to choose the best portrait. So this is portrait photography and what makes a good portrait photo. So you have to start off with, you know, what are you trying to do? Is this a family picture? Is this a picture for a magazine? Is this something for Facebook even? Something like that. So figure out what your purpose is. What do you want to do with it? How much work do you need to put into it? If it's a family photo, and maybe just it's fine the way it is, right? Clean up the lighting, exposure, <clears throat> and be done with it. But if it's going into a magazine or you want to put it on Facebook or something, you know, and all your friends are going to see it, so <clears throat> might want to clean it up a little bit and and uh, you know do it that way. So one one thing you need to start with is look at the pose accuracy you know what what are you doing in the photo your friends doing in the photo is it what you want to display and then worry about lighting and other things later so let's see this is just from a recent photo shoot of different uh, portrait styles let's let's look at these here so maybe for what I want to do just a simple portrait this series of photos where she's wearing a blue tank top might be the best to look at so yeah, I guess three-fourths body or half-body shots here. Let's look at the first one here. It's good smile, good pose. There's a little bit of cropping or, uh, you know, the elbows are out of the frame. A little bit of blurring down below because I used uh, yeah, f2.0 for my 85 millimeter lens. So it's going to be not completely in focus everywhere further away from the focus point and let's zoom in on it 100% so I just left clicked my mouse there and you can see that while she has a good smile and pose I kind of hosed the picture and then it got blurry it's not super uh, clear in, in this area so I can go over to the development module and take a little bit of uh, do a little playing with it and see how much I can salvage from the photo if you just absolutely love the pose and the smile and all those things, then you can use the photo with this level of blur at a smaller size. So, you know, I'm shrinking it like this. It doesn't look too bad. But I'm going to say that because of the blur, maybe this is not the best fit for what I want to do. Let's look at, uh, at this one. This one's pretty good. Good focus on the eyes. Yeah, very good focus but maybe not the best facial expression. Okay, so let's look at the middle one here. All right, so this one, let's see, look at the focus. Pretty good focus, not, not as good as the other one, but I like the facial expression better. So I'm gonna use this one, and now I'm just kind of scanning for things that um, maybe are not quite ideal. Let's start with the simple things. So I'm in the development module again, and it looks to me like it's slightly off-center. So I'm going to do the crop overlay tool. I'm just going to slightly rotate it uh, this way so her body or face is more in the middle of the frame. So to me, that looks visually a little bit better. Now I want to see if I can clean up any of the lighting. So I'm going to go to the exposure. Don't want to overdo it. Don't want to underdo it. So I'm going to do a little curves. Okay, now I'm going to go to the contrast, put some contrast in there. And to me, that looks pretty good. And just play with the fill light. I think that's too much. Don't really need that. It's a little bit dark on the legs, maybe. But I think that is okay. So what else is going on here? So now we're getting into, you know, maybe for Facebook and certainly for family, this is a great photo as is. So there's a couple other things I can do. I can go to enable profile corrections. It's going to pull in kind of a simple profile correction for my camera and lens that I use. Nothing nothing major. You can kind of look at the corners there. It fixes those. And what else? How are the colors? Let's look at that. So can I boost up the colors a little bit? Pull up some vibrancy. That looks pretty good. And what about the white balance? It's certainly outside in the sun. I uh, take this white balance dropper tool, I find a white spot on the screen, typically the, the eyes. And, hmm, I don't know, it, it turned it a little bit more yellow. Let's see what it looked like. 
before, and I don't know. It's the red versus yellow. I think I'll go with that. I'll go with that. It looks okay. So what else here? So now we're getting into the things that are somewhat superficial. You don't really need to uh, correct things. Let's do before we do that. We're going to go into the sharpness here. Let's look at the sharpness again and and uh, clean that up. Okay, where'd it go? You can always start with the clarity, which is a little more uh, abrupt with things. You can sometimes overdo it with clarity. Sharpening, I always have a hard time finding. So sharpening amount, 25 now. Let's boost it up to 41. Let's zoom back out. That looks pretty good. Not, not too sharp. And let's go and see what else we can do. Let's play. A lot of this is just playing, folks, and you play with certain settings and just see if it uh, looks better or not. I'm playing with the shadows now. And maybe boost up a little bit. Help with the legs down here. All right, what else? So now we're getting into the what I started earlier, somewhat superficial things. You're distorting the the truth a little bit. So we're going to go and look for facial blemishes. I mean, this model is she is basically perfect, so not a lot of things to fix. But if we wanted to go to the magazine level, different things, we can go and remove different spots on our body. So they always do like body blemish cleanup. So I can use this uh, spot removal tool, which is really for if you have dust on your sensor and it gets pulled in, but it works for body blemishes as well. Um, most, I mean, it's up to you if you want to remove these things, but um, I kind of like to clean it up a little bit. So there's a little bit of redness on the face. Um, let's go down here, just remove a couple, few more here. And just like that, good enough. For Lightroom, and this is the part where Lightroom now gets to be difficult to use. You can't take the photo very much further uh, with what you want to do, and there's only about five percent more work that you could do. So I'm going to go into Edit in Adobe Photoshop CS5. Let's pull this up. using the 64-bit version, of course. I don't have the 5.5 version. I'm not sure what really changed at the end of the day. Okay, remove that junk that I need to un uninstall. Have 16 gigs of memory, and here we go. So what I automatically like to do is go down and create a new layer so I don't uh, destroy the original photo at all. My original work, rather. And I like to zoom in on the face, and I'm going to go over and do spot healing brush. So we're just going to take out a few more. Actually, I'm going to do the healing brush tool. We're going to take out a few more blemishes. Okay. And I always go for red marks, blemishes, discoloration. Again, you're kind of stretching the truth a little bit, but uh, people can't be perfect all the time. And if you want to use it in a magazine or just want to look good in front of your friends, this is a real simple way to do it. And that is just just a little bit of shininess maybe. I don't like that the way it was. And that's it for and do a scan here. They got she has something on her shirt. And let's take that out. What else? Nothing major going on anywhere else. And I'm gonna zoom it back to the screen fit. And another area that I like to often fix, and I 
very much struggle with it is flyaway hair. So she has this one little piece here that uh, you know it's not uh, cooperating and it's somewhat of a distraction. You want to look for distractions in the photos. So let's see how this works. It's often something that I have to redo. Yeah, I'm not liking how that blends, so I'm gonna try we're gonna try one other thing. And that is going to be the clone tool. So clone is gonna be I'm gonna pull in the same area where I mark. So it looks a little better. You just have to be more detailed with it. Okay. You want to make sure things are somewhat uniform and even at times a little random. You make two, things look too perfect. They don't quite fit in, into nature. So, all right, that's probably good enough for hair, flyaway hair removal here. One other thing that I like to do is zoom in on the eyes and I go down to this masking thing and I go select a pencil and I like to zoom in real close to the eyes. I'm going to lighten or whiten the eyes at this point. You need to be real careful. This is where a pen tool is a little bit better. I'm using a mouse right now. Okay, there are several ways to do this, folks. This is just the way I kind of self-taught myself. And you have to be real careful with doing this because it will be, can be very weird. You can overdo it. A lot of photographers experimenting with this can easily go crazy. So now you go back and click this button here. I like to go up and inverse the layer. Then I go new layer from copy. So I just have the eyes on that layer. And then now I like to go up to do uh, uh, image adjustment and I go levels and I can adjust the whiteness of the eyes here and you can quickly see that it's very easy to overdo this so you don't wanna you don't want to go crazy okay so from this perspective it looks pretty white I like to leave it at that I like to shrink the image down a little more and I like to then back out a little of it with opacity so this is the original, this is the edited, you can see how crazy it can look, so I'm going to put it at about 50% right there. I'm going to now save my image, look at it one more time, and I think it's pretty good. So you want to look at pose, style, facial expression, body language, what do you want to show, what do you want to do with the photo, then you go in and fix exposure, coloration, white balance. Then you go into the more superficial things of skin blemishes, uh, flyaway hair, eye whitening, that kind of stuff. And then you're good to go. You certainly don't have to do the last part. Let me know if you have any questions.